Okay. Just in case anyone hasn't saw the end of the last review, I have a lot of harsh words about this episode. I am honestly quite surprised that this episode isn't more hated than some other episodes in this season. Like I said at the end of the last review, remember when I reviewed Princess Spike and I said that I made a, when I got into Dung and Rapa at the time I reviewed Princess Spike, I made a rant of a season 8 episode on my Instagram. This is that episode. All I could think about this episode was pain. I really had never been so angry at an episode of this show before where I had to make a rant on my social media. Let's let's just get into it so I can further explain it. This is marks for effort. In my opinion, not only is it the worst episode of season 8, but it is quite possibly the worst episode of the entire series. I am dead fucking serious. This is even worse than Princess Spike. But let's get into it. So, this episode begins at the Friendship School, where the CMNC basically want to see what's going on at the Friendship School and not going on at what's happening at Miss Shirley's school. Why exactly do they want to be a part of the Friendship School? So one failed joke after basically going over a broom closet, they spy on one of the classes. So they get to see all the classes that they like to do and see what they do. against this episode is that the CMNC are really, really want to go and be a part of Twilight's friendship school over being at Miss Shirley's school. First and foremost, they already ran a summer, they're already running a summer camp for whatever reason without adult supervision and, and, and marks and recreations. And oh my god, this is the second episode with marks in the title, so you know that this is going to suck. But, yeah, they're already running the Cutie Mark Crusaders day camp. Why do they need to be a part of this friendship school? And the way that they're acting, it almost makes it seem like that the character growth that we've seen them, especially in Season 7, it, like it just got chucked out the window. Hey! Why don't we go here instead? Why would they feel the need to do that? I mean, if this was something that happened in, like, Season 1, Season 2, Season 3, Season 4, or early Season 5, if I'm being really frickin' generous, then I could be a little bit more forgiving of it. But this is Season 8. We've seen them grow and develop. Why do they care about going a part of the school? So, after we do get, once again, admittedly the only funny thing that made me crack about this episode is the fact that Spike is still not used to with his wings. Uh, Spike? Huh? Sorry, Twilight. Still getting used to my new wings. They're pretty great, huh? Twilight basically catches the CMNC at their classroom, and so after a joke with Starlight, she takes them outside to talk to them. You can't be my student. Why not? Isn't this place for every creature? Yes, but we teach friendship lessons here. You already know all about helping ponies in need and being there for each other. Can't you just give us a chance? Again, why would this matter to you? It, it really feels like that they're acting... I understand that they're kids, but here's the thing. This is season A. Like I said, if this was an episode, if this was something that came out in either seasons 1 through 4, then I could be a little bit more forgiving of it. But no, it's just amazed me how they're acting like this. And it makes no sense. Please? You need Cheerilee's 
classes, not mine. Hurry up. You don't want late marks on your permanent record. And it kind of makes... And it really just kind of makes you wonder what exactly has Shirley been teaching them all this time. Hopefully something useful. Oh, dragon, my dragon! Bike? What did you do? <laughs> well, I'm not giving up. I know we can prove we belong in this school. Yeah! Um, how? By showing Twilight we've still got lots to learn about friendship. So, I probably should have made this joke, oh, but wanting to see the CMNC basically put on phony acting of saying that they know a lot about friendship. What tarnation? Alright. Apple Blue, you know better than to leave our good tools out like that. And aren't you supposed to be on harvest duty right now? Eh, not like the apples are going anywhere. What's gotten into you? Those chores are your responsibility. Yeah, yeah. You probably would have told her that sooner and she's... Alright. So, essentially, Applejack does see through the ruse. Well, if it's learning you want, I'd be happy to give you a private lesson right now. Starting with cleaning up all this equipment. And then Sweetie Belle tries to do the same thing, and really, am I really interested in wanting to see the CMNC do all this? Please! You know what, let me ask this again. Who here wants to see the CMNC act like their or older, younger selves back in the earlier seasons and act like they have not forgotten about friendship? Nobody! In fact, we'd rather hang ourselves. But guess who's most excited? Me! Yeah, this episode's going to be pain. So Scootaloo tries to do the same thing, but then gets busted by Rainbow Dash, and then they try to cause a fake problem in front of Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie, and really, who here cares about this? It's working! You are so careless! I don't know if Sweetie Belle is still acting about it, and, or if she's actually being seriously. Good plan, Apple Bloom. Careless? You probably could tell that I skip over a lot of this nonsense because really the whole thing just feels like filler. What? Again, why do you care about going to the school when you've already proven that you're great at friendship like Twilight said? Head. But then again, I do... I guess I do see the argument of why they want to come in since they proved them. But why do they feel the need to go through this nonsense? Okay. So they go back to the clubhouse but they actually plot more stupid reasons to try and... Okay. We haven't tried crying yet. Unless they wouldn't really care about that. But no, the crying isn't from Scootaloo, but believe it or not, it's from actually a new character who basically is a bonafide version of Darla Dimple from Cats Don't Dance if she dyed her hair blue. Oh, thank you for asking. Let no. I'm having real trouble with the school of friendship. Twilight won't let you go either, huh? Oh, no. It's not that. I'm in her class, but <laughs> it's too hard. <laughs> really? I just moved here to go to school, but everything's so new and different. I don't know any pony. Well, now you do. I'm at blue. This is Sweetie Bella Doodle. We are the Cutie Mark Earthsiders. I'm Cozy Blow. It's very nice to meet you. So, yeah, so this new character is named Cozy Glow. And as I said, she's very Darla Dimple esque, esque 
in a lot of ways, but but obviously the overly poetious voice honestly kind of makes it annoying, but I think that was kind of the point of that. So essentially, Cozy Glow is basically struggling with friendship, so the cutie marker stayers decide to help her out with it, so they basically give her some lessons on how to do friendship. That cat just keeps pricking her every step she takes. If only there was something to protect her from those spies. You know, it probably would have been easier if she could just, but then the helmet probably would have been too thin. But, uh, next time, maybe don't give away my helmet. Oopsie. I'm assuming she owes her one. So, throughout the course of the next couple minutes, we do see that the Cutie Marky Sears do a very good job with teaching friendship to Cozy Glow. It honestly goes to show how far the CMNC gone and proven that they can use their skills on friendship and actually be kind of an asset. Well, it's nice to know that everything's been resolved from, um, two episodes ago. Ugh, that class was so boring. Not even Miss Cheerily can make the history of radishes exciting. How about they don't have to learn about that stuff at Twilight School? Why do you kids care? You, you should be thankful that you are going to a public school. Well, the friendship school seems to be more like a college than anything else. So they come across Cozy Glow, where essentially... So it seems that the studying of the Cutie Mark Crusaders does seem to be more in effect, so for an upcoming exam, the Cutie Mark Crusaders do continue to help out with Cozy Glow, as we do get a montage of her actually trying to help and learn stuff, even through some dishonest means, but I think that's kind of the point. Yeah, uh, you may have noticed in the one shot when she said control, I think for those who have seen the season know what's happening, but you will see on her cutie mark, she seems to have like a chess piece, I think the pawn. But we get to see more potential foreshadowing through more montages. That is a lot of foreshadowing, and the way that she grins when she sees the star of the magic, there's a lot to take in. Okay. Up until this point in the episode, while the Cutie Mark Crusaders did drive me nuts, uh, the episode, I think, was just your general over the bad. Just your average bad. But now, we're about to get to the scene that ultimately enrages me on so many levels. So essentially what happens is that the Cutie Mark Crusaders find out that Cozy Glow ended up failing, and Twilight brings the Cutie Mark Crusaders to her office. I have a lot to talk about on this scene. This fucking scene in particular. Now, as I said, up until this point of the episode, this was just your general, average, boring, predictable bad with a couple of new elements thrown in. But whenever people talk about negative of about this episode, people always say, oh, the Cutie Mark Crusaders are just being their old selves, and why do they even want to be a part of this friendship school and just being really petty and childish about the whole thing and how they're not appreciative of being cheerily school. And while, yes, that is bad, Anytime anyone brings up that complaint, I'm like, wait a minute, that's what you're complaining about? What about this scene? So let's just get into it and let me show the explanation as to why. You know we want to be invited inside. 
tried, but it kind of went different in my head. Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to pull up the post of my Instagram to kind of explain how I feel about this episode because I can literally recite the whole thing word for word and recreate what I put in my Instagram post that I posted nearly five years ago when this episode first came out because it makes me wonder why nobody talked about this scene. Why nobody is more enraged than I am about this whole thing. For those who don't know, let me explain. So basically, much like like non-compete clause, this episode falls into the stupid trend that I really fucking despise, where essentially it's, in order to make the new characters look good, i.e. Cozy Glow, we need to make the old characters look bad. Not just the CMNC, but specifically Twilight where basically, for those who aren't aware, she basically reprimands the CMNC for basically causing her to fail the friendship test on purpose. And what I said was, is that uh, this scene just cements my hatred for this episode, because Twilight was willing to listen to a student who she hadn't met for for likely only a few weeks over the CMNC who has seen them grow and develop and willing and grow and develop for years. Years. And yet they're willing she's willing to believe that they made take Cozy Glow fail on purpose. And the reaction that I made to recreate Racine because I got into Dong and Rapa basically is what the CMNC should have told Twilight, minus the swearing. The first game specifically, where Scootaloo would be Mondo, Sweetie Belle would be Kaka, and Apple Bloom would be Leon because their words can describe my feelings for this, this scene. But let's play it, and I'll recreate my whole post to explain this nonsense. I can't believe you do something like this. Like what? You are Cozy Glow's tutors, aren't you? We've been working with her for days. That's what she told me. So you've been setting her up to fail? How? Yes. I know you're upset that I won't let you come to my school. But to teach Cozy all the wrong things out of spite, that's just cruel. I didn't kill anyone. You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah, he would never do something like that. This is a false accusation. Let's continue. But we taught her all the right things. Yeah. So even when the CMNC insists that they taught her the right things, and considering that Twilight was on a friendship mission with the CMNC literally six episodes ago, you would think that she would be more inclined to believe and listen to their side of the story. But no, she's willing to believe what one student that she made over ponies that she has known for years. Are you fucking kidding me? Then how do you explain these friendship test answers? What are the six elements of harmony? Five turtlenecks and a cheese grater? Who is the princess of friendship? Your mom? Hmm. I, even that joke is really just not that funny because right now this scene pisses me off so much. Because everybody's saying, oh, this episode ruined the ruined the development of the Q-Mark Crusaders. And while, yes, I, that is also a strike against this episode, as I said, I'm literally like, wait, that's what you're upset about? Why aren't you mad at Twilight? This episode completely ruins her character for me because she is willing to believe what one pony is saying over the CMNC that she's known for years. I don't understand. Me neither. I never thought you three would pull such a mean prank. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to stay away from my school and my students. Do I object? Hell yes, I object! Of course I do! I object, I object, I object! I mean, all of this is just a bunch of stupid theories! You need evidence! Where's the evidence? Without evidence, it's all bullshit. It's bullshit and I refuse to acknowledge it! Yeah, this is what they should have said instead of just giving up right away. <sighs> so realize... And I'm going to get more into you later, because there's more about this scene that pisses me off. But let's get into one of the few things that 
Admittedly, it's just completely glanced over, but Cozy Glow realizes since she made an oopsie-daisy and goes to talk to Starlight as the guidance counselor. Oh, well, I have plenty of that. Anecdotes in listening. I think I got my friends in trouble. They helped me study for my friendship test, and I failed it. On purpose. Why would you do that? Uh, sorry. The Kiwi Mark Crusaders wanted to go to this school more than anything. So I thought if I showed Hedmir Twilight they're bad at friendship, she'd let them come here with me. That's devious. I'm going to ignore that line because Starlight encouraging this type of behavior after her reform, that is the least of my problems. So let's just get to this point where it really drives me nuts. So Starlight and Twilight bring the Cutie Mark Crusaders back to the Friendship School, where Twilight explains what happened. We didn't do anything wrong! We promise! And they didn't do anything wrong in the first place, but I'm jumping the gun. I know that. Now. Which is why I wanted to talk to you. Wait, so we're not in trouble? Just the opposite. Cozy Glow, is there something you'd like to say? This is all my fault. I messed up my test on purpose so we could all go to school together. I'm sorry. Thank you, Cozy Glow. Honesty is one of the pillars of friendship. But you already know that, which is why I'd like to give you these. <coughs> so, in case anybody missed that, even though Cozy Glow does own up to her mistake, you may have noticed that Twilight is not giving two simple words to the Cutie Mark Crusaders. After she was willing to take Cozy Glow's word over the CMNC who weren't even at the school when she failed on purpose. They're honorary diplomas making y'all official graduates of this here school. You more than earned them without even having to study. Uh, it's amazing. You are 100% wrong. I mean, nothing you've said has been right. This is literally how I feel about this entire episode. So, in case anybody missed that. So... Two things that really drives me nuts. First and foremost, the same Twilight, who was willing to take the word of Cozy Glow over the CMNC, wasn't even bothered saying two simple words. I'm sorry. She didn't bother saying that to them after falsely accusing them for making Cozy Glow fail on purpose. So explain to me, Twilight. Why would you be willing to give Cozy Glow more proof and take her word over the CMNC who you know they're experts of friendship? Give me a f answer to something! You know what? No, I'm not, no, I'm not done! No, I'm not over the scene! This is why I'm not... Why is nobody more mad at Twilight than at the CMNC? That whole scene in that final third act completely assassinates her character, where she was willing to believe the word of one freaking student over the CMNC that she'd known for years. If you wanted to make the scene more mean spirited, hell, while we're at it, instead of just telling them, him, oh, I'm afraid I have to away from my school and my students. Not even bother letting them to give a chance to explain themselves and explain what they actually did instead of just believing what Cozy Glow said. Hell, while we're at it, why should they do, he just made the scene more to be mere, more mean-spirited and have Twilight tell the CMNC this? You'll never earn my trust back. You know what you did. And in this game, you're dead to me. But the cherry, the cherry on top of this absolute shit Sunday is that the CMNC are honorary members of the student. So, in case anybody missed that, the CMNC, after complaining and whining about Cheerilee School, are now finally part of the Friendship School. And 
and it's celebrated as if it was a good thing. And Twilight... Scotty, could you explain why this whole series of events, after being falsely accused for something they didn't do, and to make matters worse, after basically putting on this phony fake acting and make up all these excuses to be a part of this school, would you explain the logic of all of this? This doesn't make any sense! This is so freaking stupid! Because it's exactly what it is. And the episode's supposed to treat it like it's a good thing. So, in case anyone is paying attention to this, you basically, if you whine and complain enough and essentially do something to make yourself seem good, you will finally get your way and you will be basically be given punishment by those who don't know what they're talking about. To that I say, fuck off! Do you see my problem with this? The first two acts of this episode are slog to get through, but this third act and Twilight's character assassination, the main character of your series, willing to believe the word of one student over the CMNC who she knew for years and doesn't even bother to apologize to them. Fuck off! You do not in any way accept this kind of behavior on both parties. Please, I have never been this angry at an episode before. Not even Princess Spike made me this angry. And we're supposed to treat all this like it was a good thing. Place for you at my school after all. We can use some good friendship tutors on staff, and I hear you're the best out there. Yes. And this is all to be treated as if it was a good thing, after being falsely accused, and Twilight, not even bother apologizing to them, makes this... So, that was marks for effort, and I think Church can sum up my feelings about this episode. That was fucking terrible. Yeah, this is it. The worst. The absolute worst. No story, no character, no plot, character assassinations up the ass, just pain. Pure, concentrated pain. I really thought I was naive when I reviewed Princess Spike, where I said that there would be an episode that wouldn't be as bad as that. Well, I take that back. I can say, without a doubt, for Mark's for Efforts, is officially not only the worst episode of Season 8, but the worst episode in the entire series. Please. Princess Spike has been dethroned. I have never been this angry at a children's show episode ever before. The first two acts were definitely a slog to get through because it was essentially me, the CMNC, throwing a fit of wanting to be a part of the friendship school over being part of the regular school that they're a part of. But the third act is where this episode finally just kamikaze itself off the cliff and it amounts to nothing. Hing. How nobody is more outraged at Twilight's at Sat Character 180 of falsely accusing the CMNC, taking Cozy Glow's word over them, and not even bothering to apologize to them after all this. I have never been this angry at an episode before. Or, or this one. This is the type of stuff that I would expect out of Peppa Pig or Caillou. No. And to make matters worse, this is an episode that you can just skip. You know how a lot of people complain about how incredibly awful Rainbow Falls is, even though I am one of its few defenders? Well, the reason that I'm bringing this up is because I hate to spoil this, but much like Rainbow Falls for Season 4, this episode brings up plot elements that are going to be brought up in the finale, including the introduction of Cozy Glow. And even then, she doesn't even save this episode. I am completely...
completely shocked that this episode isn't more hated than it already is. This is, without a doubt, the worst episode that this show has ever produced. And I know that there are some episodes that are debatably worse, but everybody is willing to give this episode a pass. Why? One of them. The cold hard fact is that Marks for Effort is a terrible, godforsakenly awful episode that should not be seen. But as I said, Ed, except for the fact that you have to see it. As I said, much like Rainbow Falls, there are going to be plot elements, and especially the introduction of a new character, who is going to be a central character for the rest of the season, that's going to be brought up in the finale. This episode makes me so enraged at how nobody else talks about it, doesn't consider it a terrible episode, or is willing to give it a free pass, is beyond me. So, what's the final ranking? Well, this really shouldn't be a surprise. March for Efforts is an F-, minus, a total epic fail. This episode completely enrages me, it hurts me inside, I hope it burns in hell, and I hope it turns into the pissing, puffing bitch bucket from the Haunting remake. There. I had to get this episode out of the way because I am never, ever going to get another rant like this ever again. So, to make it official, March for Efforts is officially not only the worst episode of Season 8, but it is the worst episode in the entire series, completely dethroning Princess Spike. <sighs> there. I just had to get all of that out of the way because, again... How nobody talks about this episode, how nobody talks about that third act scene is completely mind-boggling. <sighs> all right, can we, now that I just vented out all my frustration, can we please just get an episode that's better than this shit storm? All right, so next time we're going to be looking at the main six. See you guys next time.